I think anybody that knows me, I'm not a flash type person. I like nice things, but I'm not flash. In fact, I would say probably quite humble. Money is no object for 47-year-old Tony Banks. Whatever he wants in life, he can afford. This is the gym, and in here we've got various bits of equipment, running machines and weights and all that sort of stuff. Uh, through here we'll have the sauna. And going outside, we have the hot tub and jacuzzi with the outside telly. We like to relax and drink the odd glass of champagne. When I first realised that you know, I was a successful millionaire, it was, it was actually a scary place to be. It was something that, that I felt a bit guilty about to a certain extent because I thought, how has somebody so stupid as me managed to do this? Hi, it's Tony here. OK, how's the staffing today? Tony made his fortune running care homes for the elderly. His business empire is worth £50 million, making him one of Scotland's richest men. I'm driven because I'm absolutely shit scared of being a failure in life and not having the wealth and the success that I want. So that drives me to do bigger and better things. I think my work ethic has affected uh, my life and relationships in my life because of the way I work. For the next eight days, Tony will live a secret life. He'll look for and be introduced to people who may need his help. What have I let myself in for? I think that this will allow me to evaluate my whole life and maybe some of the things that I've not addressed and dealt with. And also it will allow me to spend some time, hopefully, helping somebody that's in a place that maybe I was there once. Tony will be travelling to Liverpool. He'll tell the people he meets he's an ex-soldier looking for a new line of work. While he's away, he'll have to survive on the equivalent of job seekers' allowance. Oh, I feel a bit apprehensive now. I'm probably actually worrying for the first time because I don't have a clue what I'm, who I'm going to meet and the situation I'm going to be in. And it's that lack of control thing, I think, that really gets to me. What I'm doing is just uh, going on the internet to see if I can find any charities that have got to do with sport, because obviously I love my, my football, I love sport, so um, just to see if there's anything like that within the area that I can get involved in. I found one organisation that looks uh, quite interesting, and it's called uh, Daisy UK. They run a sports group for disabled kids. The guy that runs it's a guy called Dave Kelly. Uh, apparently he's blind, um, so I'm quite intrigued to see how he does all that and meet him. Hi, are you Dave? Hello there. Dave, I'm Tony. Tony, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to, how, how are you doing? doing? Oh, fantastic. Hope, hope you don't mind. I brought a camera crew with us today. Fantastic. And maybe take part if you let us. Do you know, that will be lovely for you to take part. We're, we're doing a bit of um, um, inclusive sports today with youngsters with various disabilities and their friends and family. So, yeah, it would be great for you to kind of have a go and maybe you can do a bit of blind football with us and have a go in the wheelchairs. I'd love to do that. Love to. Right then, everybody. We're, we're going to get cracking now. Um, can I just introduce, all the way from Bonnie, Scotland, <laughs> Tony. Hi, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> now, Tony's going to be giving us a hand today, and he's going to be getting included as well in some of these games. So don't be laughing at him if he can't uh, be as good as us. OK, this is how it's done. When we say, on your marks, get set, go, we start off, and I pass it under through my legs. Trying to get you, pass it under. Daisy UK is a non-profit group that encourages disabled and able-bodied kids to take part in sports together. It was set up by Dave Kelly when he himself became disabled. It, it first came to me when I first went blind, and, I, and you know, due to lack, lack of opportunities for me, because I wanted to still do sports and you know, football and cricket, but there's nothing out there. I always thought I was there. Like the only blind man in the village. <laughs> Sport's a great medium in which to, which to teach kids the key personal skills they need, like that confidence, self-esteem, and um, you know the acceptance of the disability. And uh, when they mix them with others as well, it, well, it helps. It's like a two-way thing: society accepting people with disability, people with disability accepting society. Yeah. Are you ready? Get set, go! Wheelie turn. Keep going straight. You're nearly there. 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 You're
than the greens are good for you. That's a bit better. <laughs> Daisy UK has been a lifeline for 19-year-old Kelsey. When she lost her sight two years ago, her world fell apart. Tony, yes. Tony, I asked you if you were ready. <laughs> Before Daisy, um, I was always quite, you know, not confident. I was always inside myself, you know. Like, I couldn't get out, I couldn't, like, be confident to do anything. And I've come to Daisy and I've grown so much personally. Like, I can come out and, you know, I can get involved with everything. There's nothing I'm not scared to do anymore. I'm visually impaired, but that doesn't defy who I am. What do you think about Dave and the group? Excellent. Uncomparable to anything. You know, uh, Dave is just the biggest inspiration in my life. He's blind, but it doesn't, it, he doesn't let it bother him. I'll get you a push, go. I would never have dreamt of volunteering before. I would never have dreamt to get involved with any sort of disability group at all. And it just wouldn't have crossed my mind. I was like that as well, before I went blind, because it, unless it touches you, isn't it? Unless you're in that situation where you've been, in a way, I, I think it's fortunate to be able to mix with these kids, and you've, you've had a, a chance now to see what it's like, and you'll probably get the bug now, and think, wow, I, I want to do this again. And, and hopefully, you know, um, up in Scotland, there's there's probably lots of clubs up there, and, and, and you might want to go and say, well, do you know what, what am I getting involved in this? I got that. Felt really on a high today. I went to see a great project. I really enjoyed what I did there today. Enjoyed immersing myself in it. It was it was encouraging the kids to not see themselves as having disabilities, <laughs> having the able-bodied people there, and and the fact that the leader, if you like. Is you know blind himself. In fact, I want to go back. I really want to go back because I really enjoyed that. Team Green. This morning I'm going back to Daisy UK. I love the project, and I love the people there. I think they're great people, and I, I really need to find out more about their funding and how it's all organised and how it all works really. Dave. Dave, it's Tony. Hello, Tony. How are you doing? Great, mate. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, sir. So what have you brought me today, then? Well, what we're doing today, we're going climbing. So this is Amy, is it? Yeah. You're doing brilliant. There's like three kind of categories of disability. Yeah. Physical, mental and sensory. And Amy's kind of got like all three. And yeah, she's so so fantastic. She's got that spirit and that loveliness. She's hugging and loving and, and just it's just the pleasure she was. Most beautiful, there. beautiful girl. Well done, Amy. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well done, you know. <laughs> oh, you're so good to you, you know. You you got hiding me. What do you think of Dave? Do you like Dave? Eh? Amy's completely blind like Dave, and that's where we got our inspiration from, watching what Dave could actually do, being a totally blind person. It just gives us the insight of, well, if he can do it, this is what we're hoping that Amy will possibly do in the future. Everything he does is positive, his, his aura is positive, and shows the children full positivity. He is, he's amazing, really amazing man. Bye. Bye. The kids come from all over, don't they? Oh, everywhere, yeah. I mean, how, how do they actually get here? I pay their taxis, cos so I can't let them just not come. Mm -hmm. So I pay the taxis for them and all that, and um, just to get them here. The thing is, is that, you know, that's the sad thing, that there are kids that, because maybe they're, they're, they're a little far away, they can't get here. Yeah. And so transport's a, a thing that excludes. Uh... Well, there's loads of barriers, you know, towards, um, um, you know, young people coming and taking part in sports or, you know, well, in, you know, you know, to inclusion in general, really. Transportation, that's one of them. Costs. And it's one thing I trying to do is not charge anyone for doing any of this. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think, I think that, that's, that's, that's a big thing with me. Things should be free for the young people. 